So welcome everyone. I'm Charlotte Thompson. I'm a Knowledge Transfer Manager at KTN, uh, specialising in digital economy. Today um, we are talking about the Creative Industries Fund at Innovate UK. This has similarities to the original briefing event uh, covered, so we'll be covering some familiar ground but we'll be leaving um, a large proportion of this session for you to ask questions. So if you do have any questions, then please pop them into the Q&A box. Yet if you have any technical issues, perhaps with it you can't see me or hear me, uh, then please pop it into the chat function where Sam Michelle uh, and Tara Salisbury will be able to help you with any technical issues that you might have. So there's not a live interpretation of this a briefing event, yet if you do require a transcript, this session is being recorded and the transcript will be provided afterwards alongside it. We are joined uh, by Tashara Sabrine from Innovate UK as the Innovation Lead for Creative Industries and Ellie Wicks-Jones, Business Growth Portfolio Specialist at Innovate UK Edge. So we'll move on to the agenda. So we'll start with a couple of presentations from Fashara and Ellie before moving on to the Q&A. So if you do it, like I say, have any questions, then do please pop them in the Q&A. And if they're specific, we'll try and um, address them as we go along um, in the Q&A box. But any ones that are generic that would benefit the rest of the audience. Um, then we will try and address those at the end as part of the Q&A. So I think that's more than enough from me. Um, I'd like to now hand over to Tashara to talk us through Innovate UK, the fund, its scope and eligibility. Thank you, Charlotte. Afternoon, I'm Tashara and I'm the Innovation Lead for Creative Industries, Leading Strategy and Managing Portfolio at Innovate UK. Next slide, please. Innovate UK is the business arm of UK research and innovation, and Innovate UK supports businesses to develop and realise potential new ideas. We connect businesses to people that can help them and fund businesses and research collaborations in all economic sectors, value chains and UK regions to accelerate innovation. Next slide, please. Since 2007, we have invested 2.5 billion funding about 11,000 projects and with the industry match funding taking the total value of projects about 4.3 billion contributing up to 18 billion to the UK economy. For every one pound we have invested there is return value of 67 pounds and thus far over 70,000 jobs have been created. Next slide please. Innovation <coughs> is a key to UK's future growth and prosperity. Innovation drives productivity, exports and economic growth by accelerating the development of products, processes, services and business models based on new ideas and technologies. Innovation creates new value chains, transforms existing sectors and stimulates new industries. Next slide. We are UK's innovation agency. We invest in new ideas and technologies and connect businesses to the right people to drive economic growth and social benefits. Next slide. Innovate UK's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the fast start call last year, highlighted the many fantastically innovative creative companies and we were able to support just over 100 creative businesses. Next slide. This pandemic and our funding has proven to be a catalyst for creative sector companies in helping them diversify their business models, increase productivity and make them more resilient in the face of accelerated challenges to the creative industry sector. In short, the Fast Start funding helped the companies remain competitive and ensure they are more resilient in the face of further disruption to the market. Next slide. 
the previous Fast Start support provided proved to be a much needed lifeline to the creative industries. And following on success of the Fast Start grant, we want to support more companies in the creative sector. This is a package of support with ongoing business support plus innovation funding. It's only open to applicants who haven't previously been funded and it's ring fenced for small and micro businesses. Next slide. I'm now going to go over the overview scope and eligibility for the new fund. Next slide, please. The creative sector is a priority area for Innovate UK. Pre-COVID, the UK's creative sector was valued at 112 billion, growing at five times the rate of the wider economy. Research and development is important for the creative industries to respond to rapidly changing market conditions caused by the pandemic, exiting the EU and climate change. Next slide, please. We are excited to announce the launch of the Creative Industries Fund for creative companies who have not previously engaged with us. This strategic call is a pilot fund to receive a share of up to 2.5 million fund. We want more creative companies to engage with us, not just for funding support, but to help your business grow. The aim of this competition is to provide a package of targeted support for growth so ambitious creative businesses can reach their potential. This package is designed to help creative businesses to explore new revenue streams by creating new products, services, or IP, which respond to changing market conditions, for example, the pandemic and climate change. We will support projects with the total eligible cost of up to £25,000 that will last between three and six months. Next slide, please. We have allocated up to 2.5 million to fund innovation projects in this competition. You can claim 100% of eligible project costs of up to a maximum of £25,000. Funds will be released in two installments. Total grant less 5,000 will be paid in advance of the project start date. The remaining 5,000 will be paid at the end of the project on receipt and approval of statement of expenditure and completion of a three month action plan with your edge advisor. Next slide, please. We are looking to any fund projects that offer a clearly innovative and ambitious idea we're not looking to fund something that's already been done. We're looking for something that is new to your business with a demonstrable impact to your great plan that creates a new revenue stream, for example, new products, services, or IP that impacts economic growth. It's responsive to the changing market conditions such as new modes of audience consumption, or the adoption of new technologies within the sector, for example, responding to challenges with digital, immersive and AI technologies. Next slide, please. We are looking for projects that are new market innovation that will be market ready within 12 months of receiving support, who are able to start rapidly this is taxpayers money and we welcome ambitious projects that represent value for money. We welcome applications which can demonstrate benefit to the wider creative industry subsector or regional cluster. We want to fund a portfolio of projects across a variety of creative subsectors from every part of the UK. I think we've gone one slide ahead, sorry, I'm just going to continue on. Um, the creative industries are defined by a Department for Digital Culture Media and support, DCMS, your project must focus on one or more of the following subsectors, which include advertising and marketing, architecture, arts and culture, broadcasting, including sport, graphs, design, fashion, film, games, music and publishing. Next slide, please. Projects we will not fund. This is opposite of the scope. We're not funding innovation for the sake of innovation. 
We are funding economic growth and social impact. We will not fund any projects supporting business as usual activities. Without evidence, the proposed innovation is expected to lead to significant and positive economic and societal impact or value for money that will be achieved that does not address our potentially negative outcomes, for example, on the environment, without research and development or innovation, for example, the creation of um, information only websites. There is a longer list of exceptions, but as they do not impact the creative industries, I'm not covering them here. Next slide, please. Eligibility to lead a project, your company must be a UK registered micro or small business and registered with companies house. Be from the creative industries or supporting the creative sector, which needs to be clearly illustrated in the application. Have a demonstrable ambition for growth. This is for ambitious companies who have a plan to grow and carry out its project work in the UK. As always, this is UK's taxpayers' money and need to exploit the results from or in the UK. If you are successful, you must work with an edge advisor during your project to maximise its impact. Next slide, please. Subcontractors are eligible but must be justified and quantified. If non-UK subcontractors are being used, you will need to provide strong justification on why a UK-based subcontractor is not being used. We will not accept a cheaper cost as a sufficient reason to use a, an overseas subcontractor. If you are subcontracting to a parent or sister company, please ensure you list a cost and do not include profit. A participant cannot subcontract their own directors, secretaries, or persons with significant control. We, accept, we expect all subcontractor costs to be justified and appropriate to the total eligible project costs. Next slide, please. Micro companies not operating a pay scheme. If you're not currently operating a company pay scheme, and are working directly on the project, you can include your labour as an eligible cost. This should be in line with the European Commission policy and is subject to the following conditions. Your labour cost must be calculated using a maximum of eight hours per day, five days, and 40 hours per week at £22 per hour. Next slide, please. The competition opened on the 17th of May and will be closing on the 16th of June at 11 a.m. and applicants will be informed um, during the month of August. Next slide. On the project details, we ask for details about the application team, application details, title, timescales, research category, innovation area. You must complete the EDI survey on equality, diversity and inclusion a short summary and objectives of the project, including what is innovative about it, a description of your project, which will be published if you are successful, and how does your project align with scope of this competition. If a project is not in scope, it will be ineligible for funding. Next slide. The application form has a total of six questions and only four questions will be scored. Detailed question guidance is available on IFS and the scored questions are the idea worth 20 points, impact and added value worth 35 points, business planning and resources worth 35 points and work plan and costs worth 10 points. Next slide. This is a quick snapshot of how busy the system is on last minute submissions. The submission deadline for this competition is 11 a.m. on Wednesday, 16th of June, and we advise all applicants to submit as early as possible to avoid any last minute disruptions due to unforeseeable circumstances or technical glitches that may hinder the application being received successfully. Any applications received after the deadline will not be accepted or processed on the system 
So please submit your application on time. I'm now going to hand over to Ali to give you some insight on Innovate Edge. Thank you. Thank you, Tashara. Um, so let me just get my slides up. As Tashara mentioned, this is a package of support. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Innovate UK Edge and that side of the, the programme. So um, next slide, please. So our mission, oh, sorry, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so our mission is to help the UK's most innovative businesses achieve their full potential and grow the UK economy in turn. So it is to help ensure the funded innovations make it to market, to get a better return for our investment and to help you manage innovation more effectively to grow and go global and to harness that UK competitive advantage. Next slide, please. So you may well have heard of or even worked with us under Enterprise Europe Network for EEM. Now, Innovate UK Edge is our new identity and builds on that capability. The network with its vast scope and reach across over 65 countries, so that's more outside of the EU than in, as you can see in the infographic, that's all the areas in blue, has provided Innovate UK with regional to national to international services and connections and a platform to build a consistent soft support offer for growth potential innovators within the UK. Now to date, we have been supporting over 15,000 companies and the provision of our intensive innovation management coaching to more than 9,000 businesses. We're also helping to enable over 3,000 international collaborations since 2015, so we've been very busy. We are a nationally organized consortium with a field-based army of around 250 innovation and growth specialists and 18 dedicated scale-up directors. And they're all ready to work with you in your region. Next slide, please. So it's an oft-quoted known is that if we can get more innovative UK businesses to grow and scale and to do so globally, we can build a strong and sustainable future UK economy. Now, Innovate UK Edge has been developed to help us deliver exactly that mission and to help the great companies that we work with achieve their full potential. So it brings Innovate UK soft support for innovative businesses under one umbrella. So alongside funding, we intend to give the exciting companies that we work with the edge. Our goal is that more of the companies we work with will be of better quality, attractive to investors and investment ready and have the very best chance to go on and grow and scale their businesses effectively. So we look to be inspiring, so giving innovative businesses the means to make those step changes towards growth and scale, involving, using our relationships to put more resource at our clients disposal and investing, so really understanding what you need to make what we do, what you do more effective. Next slide, please. So to give you a flavor of what the support for the Creative Industries Fund will look like. Now, if you're successful at the application stage, an EDGE specialist will meet with you and discuss your application and your ambitions for your business. So they'll be there to ensure that you really do have the capacity and the ambition to grow your company. As we said, this is a, a rounded support offer of funding and support. So we need you to meet those criteria. If you do meet that criteria, then they'll work with you to develop an action plan that you'll work on during your project. Now, your engagement with an edge specialist is as valuable as the grant, and you're expected to engage with your specialist and commit to this action plan. As um, Shah mentioned, the remaining 5,000 will be paid at the end of your project on receipt of uh, and approval of the statement of expenditure and completion of your action plan with your specialist. So it's a really important element that you need to factor in and have the capacity to deliver on. Next slide, please. So we know that growing companies face a number of challenges and sticking points. So we have developed a broad portfolio of programs and activities to support them in driving forward. 
So that includes exploiting your innovation, so protecting, harnessing and understanding your IP, improving your innovation management and accessing those global ecosystems that could be beneficial for you. Sourcing funding and finance, so working with our specialists to find the most suitable option for you and getting yourself really ready for that investment, which takes a lot of work. We also help with entering those new markets, so understanding how best to expand into a new uh, vertical and international markets to help you achieve the scale that we hope you can achieve. Now, all of our support is based on a specialist assessment of your needs. So they're not delivering a program or going through motions, but a completely tailored offer to help them harness uh, the projects for the most scalable business growth. So we work in with exactly what you need and when you need it most. Next slide, please. So as I've just mentioned, our delivery is shaped around our innovators and your personal business growth life cycle stage. So it recognises the different um, needs of businesses at those different growth stages. So we know you'll have some at the slightly earlier stage, some at the mid, mid and some at the growth scale. So we break our services into these main areas. Now, I don't have time to go into each area with you today. Um, we are expecting to see companies who will be looking for support within those top two parts of our pyramid. So those capable of that 20 or even 50 percent growth potential. Now, I must stress the word capable here. Um, like all Innovate UK support, we do expect a level of failure and key learning and business development can still be taken if your product doesn't get to market a uh, product or service. Um, but we very much hope that it will. So you can find lots more details and, um, of all of these different types of support on our website. Um, and it's really important to stress that Innovate UK Edge support can be accessed by any ambitious and innovative business. So if you're not successful for this competition, you can still reach out to us, you can still work with us, and we can find the best ways to support you in other areas that might be appropriate, um, our information services or even some other areas of this pyramid of support. Next slide, please. Perfect. I think those are the contact details. So if you're wanting to get hold of any of us or learn a little bit more about the types of things we offer, that's the best place to start. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Ellie. I think we'll stop screen sharing now so that we get to see all our lovely presenters faces. Great. And it's great that some of you have already started to contribute uh, questions through the Q&A. Please keep them coming. That's great. So to kick things, things off, Ellie, I just want to build on your presentation. So Innovate UK Edge are going to be providing some of the business support that will complement the fund as part of this package. Yet can Innovate UK Edge also support in helping companies apply to this fund? And if they are, where, who, they should, who should they be contacting to find the right advisor? Yes, so um, we aren't bid writers and we can't support you in terms of the details that you might put in there, but certainly, yeah, you can reach out to any of our advisors at any time and they can talk to you about whether this whether this competition is a good fit for you, whether it's suitable for your ambitions, whether it's the right stage and whether it's the right thing for you to do. Um, now, the best thing to do on our website is a link to a contact us page that will take you through to our central um, support team. And what they will do is they'll link you with your local advisor. So you'll, know, you'll get put in touch with someone who's in your region that can work with you knows the landscape, knows the opportunities, and, and may actually even be working with other people within your business to have an idea about your needs and, and requirements. I'll put the link in the chat as well. So yeah, that's please, good. that'd be great. Thank you. Um, and Tashara, um, what if somebody wants to talk to you or Innovate UK, why would, they, why would they come and talk to you and what questions might they ask and how can they reach you? Um, it's the same, really. Um, if somebody does want to reach me, either they can contact me directly or then we have the customer service support as well, especially for individual questions um, who will connect me with the people who want to um, answer to a specific question. Brilliant. I like how Innovate UK Customer Support Service do the chasing for companies uh, <laughs> on their behalf and make sure that you are responding to their queries. Um, 
but what's kind of the expectation on perhaps when somebody might get a response is it probably about two two to three days usually yes um i try to get back to them as within the day if possible otherwise usually it's within two days yeah i think that, that's kind of bearing in mind when you're kind of getting close to that deadline and you're you're writing your application and um, and then you have a question on scope or eligibility or whether this right finance cost is eligible, then actually making sure that you ask those questions early um, is really, really useful. Um, and of course, customer support service can help with that. So we've had quite a lot of questions around company structures uh, and whether, you know, do you need to be incorporated before um, submitting an application? Um, can you be a social enterprise or not for profit or a community interest group or a sole trader? So Tashara, would you mind just kind of confirming what sort of company entity you need to be um, to apply for this competition? So we are supporting micro to small scale businesses who are registered with companies has. Um, you don't need to be registered at the time of application, but obviously at the time of funding, you do need to be uh, registered with Companies House. And it's fine if you've got a, you know, your driver is to be a social enterprise. Surely that's a positive thing. Yeah, um, so we are supporting businesses uh, throughout the sector looking for potential growth. Um, Ellie, I'm not sure whether you wanted to add further. Yeah, so we had quite a few questions on this on mm -hmm. the first briefing around sort of non-profit social enterprises. It's fine to apply, as Shara said, um, micro small um, business status, or um, but this obviously is a, a scheme to help build business growth and revenue. So we are looking um, at you'll be doing a revenue stream that obviously can go back into the business um, or back into whatever it is you support, but um, you do need to keep that in mind that that is part of the proposal that you can um, you can respond to those marketing conditions and you can create something new that can that can bring revenue into your business. Yeah, as long as it's within the scope of the criteria we're looking for, we will support any businesses. Brilliant. We've also had um, a couple of questions that are about at what stage of the innovation project uh, that you are looking, that they're looking to deliver? And does, you have to deliver that project for the full 25K? Could it be a part of a project? Could it take you so far in your journey? Are you looking for projects at a certain stage in that innovation cycle? That's a good question. <laughs> We're looking for projects, um, basically the length between three to six months, but be market ready within 12 months. So short term, high impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you could apply for funding that might take you from feasibility through to prototype. And yet yeah, you might further on that project beyond those six months to get to the point of commercialization, perhaps with accessing additional funding or working with project partners to go to market. So it doesn't need to take you all the way, it, but you do need to be able to demonstrate that you are going to be in market in 12 months. Oh, so this is short term, high impact. Yeah, and that's, that's part of the reason we have the Edge Advisors, Edge Specialists working with you on the action plan is that they will be doing that initial assessment to figure out whether you have got what you what it takes to to get you to that um you know I, I know we've had a lot of questions around sort of startups or early stages they're all fine and they're eligible but what a lot of those businesses will struggle with is the capability and the capacity to spend that time and work on something that's going to get them to that new mar market ready within 12 months show that commitment spend that time with the specialists um so it's all you know for you to consider which is why you know it's a, it's a great idea to to reach out to specialists or yourselves in the ktn to try and figure out if this is the right fund for people at this time um in this stage of their development i always feel like innovation is associated with tech and of course i feel like there's more to that like in terms of business model innovation service innovation process innovation um especially when that comes to the creative industries um, but can you can you also take like an existing product and service that's already in market and apply it 
into the creative industries, would that be considered innovative and eligible as part of this competition? I think what we're looking for is something new. So even if you do take an existing technology, but we would like to see how it's been used within the creative sector that will bring that value addition. Yeah, so in, this, in the scope, we, we state in there that it has to be new to your business. Uh, with a demonstrable impact to your growth plan. So this fund, as we say, is there to help businesses grow and scale. That should be the focus. What you use to do that is your tool and your mechanism. Um, and it should be new to you, something novel to your business that's going to help you do that grow and scale. And it's, and it's fair to say that you can't have already delivered the R&D project and then apply for the fund to pay for it retrospectively. This is what something that you are planning to do in the future. Something completely new to the business, yeah. Hmm. But you could possibly um, apply to the fund to build on that innovation project that you've already started working on, but this would, this would demonstrate the next phase of it. You'd, I think you'd have to be clear on that in the in your application because obviously we are looking for those new to business, innovative, ambitious. So if it is already something that's established in your business, how does it go against um, meeting that criteria? So um, I think it would be how you position that and how how much work has been done before, how established is that way of working or that model within your business currently, um, or is it something that's taking that you've investigated and actually you want to you know it's going to have real great impact on your business and completely to the next stage so uh, it's probably all slightly case by case basis and and for that for the applicants to justify in, the, in their application form we've had a couple of questions about what really counts as an eligible cost like what can you spend the money on um with you know, can you, you know if you're going to go to market you need to do some marketing so could i count that as part of my project Marketing cost is a tricky one for you specifically <laughs> to use. Um, all of the details about what's eligible and what isn't, and there's a lot of things that are in scope and out of scope, is all on the website. There's a big document which tells you about eligible costs. Marketing one is a tricky one. We don't tend to allow that as an eligible cost. Um, so you'd need to have a look and see what it is that you're looking for. If you're, if anything that you're, that if this is a specific uh, eligible cost question for a specific project then it'd be worth speaking to our customer service desk who can go through all the details with you and the nuances about what you might be able to claim and what you won't. But I'd say the best thing to do is to start with the, the guidance on the website. Um, but yeah, marketing particularly is, is one that isn't generally supported. Yeah, I feel and would endorse the benefit of user testing and under, understanding and getting that feedback from your possible customers and end users on your innovation journey. So I would have thought things like market validation, market studies, where you might formulate that market strategy, um, hopefully in collaboration with your Innovate UK Edge advisor, would actually be a positive thing. Yeah, no, it would. I think it's, it's how it's framed and how it's put within, within your application in terms of eligibility and things like that. But um, that's certainly something that they will work with you on is how to access and get feedback on what it is that you're you're trying to achieve within your within your project. Mm. There's been a couple of questions about how you claim the finances. Um, and often I always find with grants that it's like in arrears. So like you deliver the work and then you then audit that you have spent that money and then you get to claim it. But this one's different, isn't it? Yes, that's 100% of the cost um, is eligible. So we are giving you 20,000 upfront and the balance 5,000 once um, the edge advisor is satisfied with all the different criteria has been, um, um, with the receipts and everything has been monitored and everything's okay. Yeah. Um. And if you were to act, so this, this fund, of course, is if you've not received an Innovate UK uh, fund previously. Yeah. But what if you've accessed or received funding from one of the other UK research and innovation councils, like the Arts Council, before? 
is that does that still mean that you can apply for this fund? I think as long as they've not received any funding from Innovate UK directly, then they're okay to apply. Great. Um, we had a few questions as well um, around people that had applications in. So I think there was quite a number of previously who had applied for SMART and obviously hadn't had their outcome letters or anything like that. Um, and the guidance we were giving on that is that you can apply, but if you're successful for SMART, then you wouldn't be successful for this fund. So it would all be part of the final checks that we make before awarding. Could you possibly apply for SMART for a different innovation project? It's based on the business. So if your business has received Innovate UK funding before, then you're not eligible for this scheme. Yeah, you could apply for SMART following this fund um, yes. for another innovation project. Yes. Brilliant. Or any other Innovate UK competition. Yeah, it doesn't stop you from applying for anything else. It's just this fund. We're specifically trying to target those businesses that haven't received support from us before. Brilliant. So I am trying to keep up with all your questions coming in because <laughs> I've been trying to cover the main theme. So I'm sorry if I've not been particularly specific in the ones that you have um ones that you've asked i think um to your point ellie there um this program is actually quite similar to the young innovators and women innovation and in that you know there's quite a really strong business support package coupled with the funding available yeah if you've if you've been successful in the young innovator as well congratulations um uh, to the attendee who's been successful uh, in that today um but you you wouldn't be you wouldn't be able to apply therefore for this one no the, as you say the package of support is very similar in terms of you're working very closely and actually with the young innovators um, you get 26 days of support so you get much more than you may may get um at this it's, and it's really intense so um no it would it, it, i don't think it would add enough value to that business to undertake both mm. we had a question um again to yourself um ellie about you this this business support is being provided by innovate uk edge and companies can't use advisors or things that they might already be working with in their businesses um, no, they certainly can do. Um, this package of support is obviously uh, part of this programme and you would be expected to take part in that and, and work through your action plan with, with one of the EDGE advisors. If you are working with other advisors outside of your business, then you can continue to do so. Um, it's important that you continue you keep the communication channels clear and explain to your advisor what it is that this other, you know, other specialist or whoever external is that you're working with. Um, if you are already working with an edge advisor already, which some people will be, um, then we'll try and keep that continuity and ensure that that's followed up on. So there isn't too many people getting involved or any sort of conflict, but it might be that actually we can bring in some additional um, uh, expertise to help with whatever you're doing specifically in this project. So that's a clear differentiation to make sure that if you are working with an edge, special, uh, edge, edge specialist already, are you going to get the value from this from applying to this fund and being successful in it as well or already or are you already getting that support and everything you need from them um because if you're just after it for the funding then that doesn't then you won't get as much out of this full package and this program as you could do um but yeah any other externals you can, you can carry on with that relationship and um they'll ask you all about it on the initial setup and and where we can add the value mm. And how do you do, you're going to have to be doing a lot of matching. So how are you going to do that? Um, is this going to be on a regional basis? Um, what can they kind of expect from this expert? Yeah, it'll be a mixture. So um, the edge advisors are business specialists. So they know everything there is to know about growing, scaling, creating businesses. Um, what we'll be doing is we're, we've got a very tight time scale. So upon the successful awards, we'll be matching up with um, first of all we'll be looking at regions but we'll also be making sure that there is a le level of knowledge and understanding um, of your industry and, and if not plugging gaps with help from KTN or Creative England and, and other agencies to help support and give the knowledge um, but ideally it'll be on a regional but we fit we will we'll match on best fit for that company um, and you know there might be some that we've identified for example 
lots of questions around startup businesses. So we'll be looking for advisors who have that, you know, have specialties within that area so that they can really understand and, and work with those businesses on that. So it's a bit of a manual process and it's going to be um, the time scales are short on this, as you know. So, yeah, we'll be as of the 16th of June, we'll be working very hard to, to match up and get those conversations started before the start date. And finished by the end of March. So make sure that yes. if you're going for a six month project that you're starting it um, at the beginning of September, <laughs> <laughs> don't get caught out by the, the, the end of financial year deadline. Um, so Bashara, I just kind of want to come back to the point about the diversity of the creative industry sector and actually what would be what is included in that i know um is it on the on the scope page of the innovate uk uh, competition page actually articulates each of the subsectors of the creative yeah. industries that you're targeting so a company has to fit those those ones listed it's within one of those um subsectors um should i go through them again or maybe we could share the screen I think I am. Um, um, so I've got the competition page up. I'm just going to pop it on, um, see if we can get the chat yeah. up, um, so and I'll put uh, that on to to everyone, um, so uh, people can see. Advertising and marketing, architecture, arts and culture, broadcasting. We include sport, craft, design, fashion, film, games, music, and publishing. Brilliant. And I'll also just pop in the chat the link to the competition web page. So yeah, quick and easy. You, you can all check it out on there. There's, there's a really interesting, there's a really interesting question actually about so you start an innovation project and you just and you find out that it's not gonna work. Like, you were doing a feasibility study, you were doing something incredibly disruptive and novel in the market, not being done before. And actually you find out that it's not gonna be feasible. There wasn't really the customer need that you anticipated. What happens if you fail? Well, we welcome projects uh, which are high risk. We wanna be able to offer them the incentive to try. Um, so if you fail, it's fine, but as long as we want to see uh, disruptive projects which are coming onto the market. I think this is the benefit actually of this programme, isn't it, Ellie, that hopefully by working with an advisor that you can have those discussions about how to adapt your innovation project. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a linear journey, is it? Like no. there's supposed to be failures if this is innovation. You're supposed to learn from them and grow and move and move beyond. Yeah. No, exactly that. Um, as Shara said, and I mentioned in the thing, we expect that there will be a level of failure. I think for us, it's to ensure that there is a project and an action plan that that sits there to try and get you to where you need to go. If in practice that doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But you know the the specialists will work with you beyond as well so you're not limited to just working with them for three to six months um they can work with you long term on lots of different things so we have some companies that work with advisors for years on you know as things develop and new things come up then look at the next options and what else could you could do yeah and and the show and um, projects also assigned a monitoring officer as well um yes. as part of the project and is that at the start and at the end of the project or is there kind of conversation throughout the project as well? I think there are certain touch points within the project just to make sure everything is um, aligned and all the communication is quite clear as to the help that's needed as well and to make sure everything is on target. Mm, um, and I think having those discussions when things are not going quite to plan at those early stages is 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 a good thing to do rather than before everything <laughs> doesn't doesn't work out so um yeah. how amazing to have both a monitoring officer and a business support advisor to to work alongside these projects so we've had um i mentioned about how innovation kind of goes beyond technology and we've had a few questions about actually would innovation include things like a technical process or the development of creative intellectual property would you agree with that, Bashara? Yes, we're looking to fund projects that will create um, IP. That's important. 
Um, so we do support um, projects which are out of the box. But obviously, um, it has to be something very innovative and not classed as business as usual or information only websites. Yeah. yeah. And we've also had a bit of jargon come through on the Q&A of TRLs, so technology readiness levels. Yeah. So, you know, where are you on your on your um, development journey? Um, are you looking for a particular stage in that development journey, like prototyping or demonstrating in with a customer, or um, or can it be any of that? I think it's um, open for any of that, as long as you're going to be market ready within twelve months. So you have three to six months um, to get everything ready. Um, so we've not specified a specific TRL level. Brilliant. Thank you. I'm having a quick scan to see if there's any other common themes. But I do have one for yourself. I think this might be um, Ellie perhaps might like to address about actually what makes a good application. So there are four written questions to really make yourself stand out from the crowd. This is a competitive process. There's a minimal pot of money. How are you going to make your application really exciting? Oh, um... <laughs> This might be more of a shout, but I'm going to give my opinion anyway. Um, so really, it's it's about ensuring the, those main ones in the scope. So really identifying that clear and innovative idea. And I think for us, the biggest thing and the biggest reason why we're doing this program is to try and help businesses with, with their growth and scale. So you really need to be able to show that ambition that you're that you could that it's going to have a demonstrable impact to your the growth of your business and that it's going to catapult you up. As I said, we're looking really for those 20 to 50 percent growth. So, you know, big growth potential here for your business, not just something that's going to improve it a little bit. So ambition is probably the biggest thing showcasing that you're ready and that you have the appetite and the capability to undertake something. You know, this isn't a huge amount of money um, and it's, a, it's a, a short period of time. So we want to show you that businesses can be, as you said, straight out the blocks, ready to go, ambitious and, and hit the ground running and get some really great impact at the end of their, at the end of their project. So it's just making sure that you're articulating that and what it means for your business and, you know, how you think that this new novel you know creation is is going to do that for you mm. Tashara, what would be what, what yeah, do you I think agree. would make it stand out <laughs> i agree completely with ellie um she thinks she covered everything and we're looking for very compelling ideas that's um going to create that leap in terms of innovation and growth for the uk economy mm. i'm going to put one of my bugbears in reading <laughs> various grant applications is um, lots of companies tell me they have the best innovation in the world, but that's what the last company told me. So tell me why, if yeah. you can quantify your statements um, and you can show that key differentiator, um, then make sure that you are demonstrating by creating unique statements in your application. So what would stop somebody writing the same thing as you? Um, so yeah, that, that's that's always that's always the, the big one for me. So be as specific as possible, um, especially when you've got a limited word count. So we've had um, there's been a few questions um, around enabling technologies really. So there's lots of course creative subsectors, but actually there's kind of enabling technologies within that, like virtual reality for gaming or artificial intelligence within marketing. Could you apply for a project that was funding that technology development to go into those different creative sectors? Yes. Yeah, simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So this is a this is one that comes up, I think, and is not always a consistent one with all Innovate UK applications, is about subcontractors. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, do they have to be based in the UK? Can they be um, from another international, another country? What, what are the rules on this one? 
So we are allowing subcontractors, but if you are to subcontract somebody outside the UK, we need a clear justification as to why, because um, and any reason just purely based on cost is not a sufficient reason. So that needs to be clearly justified and um, demonstrated as to why we're looking to outside the UK, because our ultimate goal is to support the UK. Yeah. So it's, um, there's another question that I've, I've come across quite a bit. So you submit an application and you want the money now. How long do I have to wait? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I think we'll be notifying those who are successful in August. Um, I would imagine once all the relevant checks are done, um, Ali, correct me, is it around November we're expecting? Yeah, well, well, this is a three to six month project, so we are looking for all the funds to be spent by the end of March, so we're working really tight on this. Um, we would expect that the contracts, I think, um, yeah, it should be in to work backwards October you should have it by the first of October at the latest I think in, in working for a six month project and the end date is 31st of March um but yeah we are at the mercy of the operations teams but that's the sort of latest time scales we're working on um as Charles said the the deadlines and the notifications will be in August so we have a few weeks to turn that around do all the checks get the conversations with the um edge specialists and then uh, get contracts out so as part of really applications when I think one of the questions is on like that work plan that you're plan you how you how you're going to spend the money and what you're going to spend the money on what are the key activities and at what time scales that you would be delivering them against you should put that within that really that time frame and um, a couple of questions around this is 100% funding isn't it this is quite yes. novel but yeah <laughs> what a bonus um and there's also a couple of questions around um, things about content development, because of course there's, you know, it's a huge, there's not a huge amount of content funding out there. It's not necessarily, you know, it might be innovative in the content that's being developed, but it might not be like a, an enabling innovational technology within that. Does that count? I think we'll have to assess it on an individual basis, because it's, it's quite difficult to just say broadly. Mm. Yeah. Um, so if you do have any specific questions on whether your project is in scope, then Innovate UK Customer Support Service. Um, so that's the third time we've said it. So hopefully that, one, <laughs> that one's gone in. Um, definitely a useful resource and underutilized resource. All right, so we've got five minutes left. So I'll see if I can pull out a couple more questions. So in terms of um, your director of a company, and you do not have a PIYE scheme or you're not on the PIYE scheme, how can um, I put my labour um, against the project? Um, yeah, I think we covered that on one of the slides. I um, can't remember which slide number, but um, you are eligible for project costs. Um, let me just find that particular slide. Can you see that? Ah, uh, on it. Yeah. There yeah. we go. So eight hours per day, five days maximum, 40 hours per week at 22 pounds per an hour. So that's the maximum limit if you do not have a PIYE scheme or a director of a business. And um, also to confirm that if you are someone with um, control over the company then you could not be subcontracted directly yeah. to your company yeah great thank you for sharing that slide and Ellie there's a question there's um, a question on um unlike other Innovate UK applications, actually there's another stage gate, which is 
have you have you actually shown to have growth potential and have mm-hmm. the ambition to go beyond the project mm-hmm. and so you do need to pass that second go yes you do so um this is a new pilot for us a new way of working as we've talked about earlier um the edge support isn't new it's part of package on lots of different programs and something we offer for all businesses that have received innovate funding and those that haven't um but bringing in the the specialist to help support and ensure that we are getting the most growth ready ambitious companies through to the competition is a new pilot um we as, as i mentioned they are experts in this area and they can work with you to understand what it is and, and to dig into the potential and make sure that you're ready um but i know there's been a lot of questions about whether the people can access this before to sort of check and i'll repeat it again absolutely you can get in touch with your local advisor they're not going to help you you know write your application but they will certainly work with you talk to you about what it is that you're looking to do and figure out whether this is something that's got real potential and real legs for your businesses um so yes it's, it's a new way of working um and we're you know really hoping to take a lot of lessons and, and good news stories from it there's um i'm just going to end on one que- one further question which is actually there's been the introduction of the the EDI survey so you have to fill out separately an equality diversity inclusion survey um, which is just kind of an anonymous survey that goes into the masses so Innovate UK can can measure how it's doing on EDI performance but when it comes to the actual written application what considerations should organizations be taking into account as part of their innovation project on equality diversity and inclusion? I think within the, uh, sorry, the questions on itself, because there's only six questions in total. Um, so two of which are not scored. Um, so one of which you just mentioned, you need to um, fill in the EDI to be able to actually apply for the competition. I'm sure there's probably a bullet point on wider impacts, isn't there, about actually you can talk about the diversity inclusion considerations, whether there's a positive or negative impact from what you're trying to propose. But either way, if you do want any support on that, then there is some great tools available um, on the supporting information page of the Innovation uh, Innovate UK competitions page. Um, and it's well worth um, looking at our KTN uh, diversity and inclusion webpage as well. And we've got a few toolkits to help you kind of think about how to make sure that in your innovation journey, you are being as inclusive as possible. So the time is up. Thank you all so much for your questions. I know I've kind of had to try and lump quite a few of them together to make sure that we um, address uh, as much as possible. But if you've got any specific questions, then do please reach out to your Innovate UK Edge local service, KTN and um, our digital and creative team. And of course, Innovate UK Customer Support Service, if you want a black and white answer to any of your questions on eligibility and scope. So thank you very much to our presenters, the Shara and Ellie, for your time today. Um, thank you. And for all of you that have attended and been such great um, and active participants through your questions. So take care, everyone. And wishing you all a great day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.